Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to the National Parks Expedition Challenge. Hey kids, today we are at Pipestone National Monument in Pipestone, Minnesota, and we have met a brand new ranger that you're going to love. This is Ranger Gabby. So thanks for allowing us to be here today. Tell us about how you got to this great place. Yeah, so I started working here for their Youth Conservation Corps when I was 15. After that, I started to volunteer here, and then after I graduated high school, I was offered an internship. Um, I just recently graduated college and now I just landed a permanent position and I'm just really lucky to be here. What did you study in college, Gabby? I majored in anthropology and I minored in Spanish. So this is a perfect blend for you, right? Absolutely. It covers everything I like. Well, I know that when you were younger, you actually came here. Tell us a little bit about that story. Yeah, so my father is a medicine man and we have a piece of land here that we use for special permit access. Um, so people can come here and do their ceremonies. And my father was one of those people. Um, so I've been coming here since I was a baby to do ceremonies. So I have a strong spiritual connection to this site. And you're from a very large family. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I have 14 older siblings. Um, so I'm the youngest. I have nine older brothers and five older sisters. Uh, we're all pretty close and we all practice the same uh, traditions. This is a very special place, and before we came on camera, you talked about this was a peaceful place. Yeah. So tell us about the peoples that lived here and that still live here today. Absolutely. Um, so for over 3,000 years, Native Americans from all over the country have been coming here to quarry the pipestone to use in ceremonial uses for pipes. Um, and this was a peaceful place, and it was open for everybody. So this wasn't just one group of people's place. Um, so even enemy tribes would come here from all over and they, they wouldn't fight. Um, everyone recognized that this sacred spot was for everybody. Well, it's called Pipestone mm -hmm. and there's a reason for that. So yeah. tell us about the quarrying and what they came to get and what types of rocks are here. Sure. So here in the park, we have two different types of rock. Uh, we have the Pipestone, which is where the town got its name from. Uh, that's just a generic term for any stone that can be carved into pipes. Um, and the pipestone here was the one that has the most spiritual connection and the most amount of cultural history um, associated with Native American ceremonial usage. Um, so this is one of the, the best places to get a, some pipestone in order to use for pipes in the country. Uh, the second stone that we have here is the Sioux Quartzite, and you can actually see that behind us at the Winnewissa Falls here. Um, and that stone is about as hard as steel. So when people come here to quarry, they actually have to dig through this steel-like rock in order to get down to a very thin vein of pipestone. Um, and it's all done by hand, so no power tools are permitted here. And it's still an active quarry site today, and, and Native Americans can come here to get pipestone for ceremonial use. When did this place become a national monument? When did the National Park Service enter the picture? So the National Park Service entered the picture in 1937. That's when it became a national monument. Um, early, in the early 1800s, after non-Indigenous explorers came through here, um, they were moving Native Americans onto reservations. In 1858, a treaty was signed with the Yankton Sioux Tribe. They agreed to move onto a reservation only if we still had access to these quarries. So because of that treaty, Native Americans uh, were able to have one square mile uh, piece of land actually around the Nicolay marker, which is just up there. Um, that land was made into a reservation. There was a boarding school here. Um, and shortly after that, the reservation became dis dissolved. Um, and there was no really any, there was no protection for this park after that. Uh, one of the locals, Winifred Bartlett, actually pushed for this place to become a national monument so that the federal government would be mandated to regulate Native Americans' rights to quarry here. So kind of a controversial history, but I'm glad it ended up that way. Well, I know that you, you work towards educating people uh, to get past the past yes. narrative. What, what does that mean? So a lot of the times when we talk about indigenous history or Native American history in this country, it's always in the past tense. That narrative is in the past. And it doesn't really give people a good picture of what indigenous culture looks like in present day. So what I do at this park, what I try to do every day, is try to expose people to culture and Native American culture and, and the spiritual beliefs 
so that they realize that it's still a prominent thing today, that Native Americans are still here and it's not just a thing of the past. We're still practicing our ways and we're still here coring after 3,000 years. Um, so I just try to spread that information and, and give people a piece of reality that they can take home. Well, we're here in October of 2022 and we just had a beautiful celebration here yesterday. Yeah. Tell us what that looked like. All right, so the, our Indigenous Peoples Day celebration was yesterday. All along the trail, we had bags with little lights set up and it was nighttime. Um, along the trail, we had Indigenous artists. So we had singers and dancers and storytellers um, set up along the trail so that when visitors came through, they could see different forms of Indigenous art and they could walk and enjoy it and kind of be in the peace. So it was really great. Why is it important for you to be here? I believe it is important because, um, so I'm a member of the Yankton Sioux tribe, so the tribe that did sign the, the treaty with the United States government. Um, and our people were the, the prominent guardians of this place for the last three or 400 years. So I feel that it's, it's important for me personally because I feel like I have such a strong connection to this place, not only with my heritage, but with my spiritual beliefs and just the way that I grew up. So I wanna be the one to tell the story. I wanna be here to share that story with people. And I think that's important that the people that were here are, and the people that are still here are the ones telling the story so that we're really listening. Absolutely. We're in front of this beautiful waterfall yeah. that I understand has been cut down a little bit from what it used to look like. Yeah. But we know that there's also some possible issues with water here. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so unfortunately our water is highly, highly contaminated. Um, so if you do accidentally touch the water, you're supposed to wash your hands afterwards. It's safe to say that the, the c contamination from the waterfall is due to heavy pesticide use, uh, livestock waste, and storm water runoff. So this is something that you as a park and as a community are dealing with right now. Yeah. Um, and obviously we want to make this water safe because as we know water is life and we need yes. this to take care of ourselves. So that leads us to our STEM and engineering challenge. Students, you know that we work closely with the United Nations to tackle some of their problems that they have put out there for us to look at, one through 17. So we're gonna look at goal number six today, which is all about clean water and sanitation. We want you to do some research on Pipestone National Monument. Find out a little about the water quality here, so we want you to come up with ideas that will help Ranger Gabby and her fellow rangers as we think about livestock and pesticides um, and trash that sometimes we put into waterways as humans. Uh, our impact is not always great. We want you to come up some, with some ideas for them on how they can solve or tackle this problem. And then we want you to take those same ideas back to your community. So whether you live in a rural area or a suburban area or right in the middle of the city, it is all our responsibility to take care of our water. So when you're taking your dogs out and you know they have to go to the bathroom, what are you going to do to make sure that their waste doesn't get into the waterways? Maybe you're helping your family take care of bugs in your garden. What type of pesticides are you using and can those get into the water source? Can they get into the groundwater? Also, just throwing away trash. We know that microplastics is a huge deal. So when you're finished up with your trash, where are you putting that? Are you reusing things or reducing your impact? All of these ideas will be great as Ranger Gabby and the Pipestone National Monument look to figure out how they can take care of the water here. So once you come up with those ideas, we wanna make sure that you tag us at Dacia92. Also tag the National Park Service, hashtag Park Challenge, and don't forget to tag Pipestone National Monument. Cause Gabby, I know that you're excited to see what these kids will come up with, right? Absolutely. We love engaging students to solve the world's problems because as adults, we've not done a great job with it. <laughs> and we know that it's up to them to make a difference. So we want to help them get started with this by working with Pipestone National Monument. Yeah. They're sitting in their rooms right now, or some of them may be um, home or doing this virtually at home. They want your hat. And I know that sounds kind of <laughs> selfish, but they would like to work at the national parks. Can you look into that middle camera and possibly give them some ideas 
on how they can become a park ranger later on. Yeah. My biggest advice to you would be to go to the nearest national park site and just volunteer. Make connections, make friends with the staff, um, and just put your effort into that because it'll pay off. It will. That is great advice. Kids, you heard that. We encourage you that whatever you're passionate about, figure out how that aligns with what you're studying right now. And you too can be a National Park Ranger just like Ranger Gabby and possibly even work at Pipestone National Monument someday. Remember, there's over 424 National Park sites around the country. This is one of the most special ones, we believe. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. It's been a great day. This is absolutely beautiful. I can understand the idea of feeling peaceful here yeah. and understand that when people come here, they will lay down their weapons, their problems, put things aside that they've, that's they been worrying them and just think about how we can be good humans to each other. So thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So on behalf of Dr. Grizzle and Ranger Gabby, we are out of here.